Next, we're going to talk about how to determine the main entry for a serial. You'll notice I put main entry in quotation marks on this slide, and I just did that to reference the fact that technically main entry isn't a term that's used anymore under RDA. Um, it was from ASAR2 and really was more relevant in card catalogs when you had to determine one main relationship in order to organize the cards in your card catalog. Um, but because mark formatting still requires there to be only one one XX field in a record, we still need to determine sort of the primary relationship between whatever we're cataloging and one entity. So I'm still going to continue to use the phrase main entry even though it's not actually a part of RDA terminology, but I think it's the most succinct way to describe what I'm talking about here in this video. So most commonly for serials is to have a main entry under title. Usually there's not one particular person responsible for um, a serial so that spans a whole range of years, months. Um, you'll sometimes see a corporate body responsible if an organization publishes a serial, but it has to fall into a particular category. And sometimes you'll see a uniform title used as a main entry. And we'll talk more about what I mean by that in a little bit. So your decision process when you're deciding if there should be a main entry other than the title is, does it fit one of the categories in RDA 19.2.1.1.1, that really long number tells you that um, that is just specifying what type of materials can be considered to have a main entry of a corporate body. And we'll talk a little bit more about that on the next slide. Um, if it doesn't fit one of those categories, then think about what the title is, and then think about whether or not it has needs a uniform title. Um, when I referenced RDA 19.2.1.1.1, um, what I meant was the rule that tells you when an item should have a corporate body as a main entry. Um, just because an item comes from an organization doesn't mean that it necessarily should have that organization considered as its author, basically, is what we're talking about here. The things that do need a main entry, which would go in a 110 field for a corporate body, are works of an administrative nature, um, things like annual reports, directories, things that actually talk about the organization itself, not some other topic. So if you had the Nebraska Association of Engineers and their annual report, that would be considered something that should have Nebraska Association of Engineers as a main entry. Um, if the Nebraska Association of Engineers issued a serial publication on engineering in Nebraska, that isn't about the organization, so they would not need a main entry for that organization. The other category is something that represents the collective thought of a body, meaning they're expressing their opinions on an issue. So, for example, if there was a commission that regularly gave a report on an issue and gave their opinion on it, that could be considered something that they need to, you need to have a main entry for the organization, the commission. And things that represent the collective activity of a body, so things like proceedings from a conference that are put on by an organization. Um, these are the categories that apply usually to serials. There are a few other categories in the section of RDA, but I'm not going to mention them at this point because they're not really that relevant for serials. So here are some examples of mark fields and what you'll see for each of these main entry options. Um, if an entry is under a corporate body, you will have a 110 field with the corporate body's name and then a 245 field with your title in it. Most common, like I said, is to have an entry under the title, and then you don't need a separate field from your 245. Your 245 functions as the main entry. Uh, you'll notice that in both of those examples, the first indicator is zero. This means that the title is the main entry. Now next we come to the concept of uniform title, which again is not RDA terminology, but because we're still working in MARC, it still kind of sums up the best what we're dealing with here. Um, a uniform title is necessary for serials when two publications have the same title, and it's a fairly generic title, and so you want to distinguish between those two titles. For example, we have two publications named Network in the first example here, and we have two publications named Bulletin in the second example. Now for both of these, you will have a 245 field with the title exactly how it appears on the issue that you're working from, 
But then you can see the uniform title, which goes in a 130 field, has a qualifier of parentheses to distinguish the two. Um, sometimes it's the place of publication, but um, an organization that issues a particular publication can also be used as a qualifier. So these uniform titles serve the purpose of distinguishing two publications that have the same name. Every once in a while you might see a serial that has a personal author, you know, meaning one person is responsible for all of the issues. That's pretty rare because periodicals span usually a significant amount of time and usually they have content created by a number of different people so you won't usually see one person creating all the content for a serial, but if that ever did happen, um, probably a smaller newsletter might be an example of that. And so here is what it would look like. You would have a 100 field for the author's name and a 245 field for the title. So those are the options for main entry for serial.